Hello and welcome to the video. This is my collection of tips and tricks that I've collected over the past year and a bit flying this thing here. This of course is the DJI HD FPV system. Uh, I originally got mine in more to do a comparison between it and the Fat Shark Shark Bike system. In fact that video is still around if you want to go and have a look at it. Uh, but ended up uh, really loving this stuff. This is actually a really good system. Uh, it isn't cheap but it works spectacularly well. I went the whole hog when I got mine. I got the goggles and I also got the FPV controller as well. Uh, this actually works brilliantly with the system and I use this almost all the time in my models that have the uh, system in it rather than use Crossfire or anything else. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One of them is going to be in the tips I'm about to go through. So these are all the tips and tricks that I have found uh, in the last 14, 15 months of flying with it. I need to say a massive thank you to all my Patreons. I asked my Patreons for their tips and tricks. So all of you that have tips that are being featured, I'll give a shout out to you as well. So thank you to my Patreon community for uh, getting involved as they always do. It's a cracking bunch of people. So let's get into the tips. I'll put links down below if you want to jump to a particular one. The first tip is to keep your goggles updated. The latest version of the firmware, the firmware updates have really slowed down now. So uh, I was kind of skipping every other update back in the early days uh, just because they were coming out so thick and fast. Uh, now the latest version's been there for quite a while and it gives you the higher speed, uh, the higher data rate, which gives you an even better picture. The issue of course is that when you update the goggles, you also have to update all your receivers to make sure they're on the same version. Be aware that with the very latest version, I'm hearing that things like the spectator mode doesn't work as well. So be aware of that. Uh, so I have not got the latest uh, version on all my stuff, but if you've only got a couple of receivers, uh, it's definitely worthwhile just putting aside 20 minutes and just running through it all and doing all the updating. Second big tip for me is replace the strap. I'm using a fat straps strap on mine. Uh, I'll put links down below, you can go and have a look. Uh, I wasn't a fan of the three-way thing that went over the head. And the issue with that was, is that when you are waiting to fly, there's only one place for the goggles to sit, and that's kind of there on your forehead. Now that's fine in a cool day, but on a warm day, I was fine that get lots of condensation on the inside. And when you pulled them down, it took a little bit of time for the fan that's in these to blow that condensation away. I like having the fat strap because it just connects at the side. It's a nice thick strap. It also means that you have this little piece to grab hold of it to pull it out the case. More on that in a second. But the way I tend to get ready to fly is I will have them down here where they, they're not getting sweaty. And then when I'm ready, I can just pull them up and I'm ready to go. So second big tip is I would replace the strap. Loads of different straps around, but my recommendation would be use the fat straps ones uh, they are really, really good and they keep it beautifully in place. Third tip is that you can replace the antennas. Uh, these are the ones that come with it. And to be honest, this is kind of what I fly with it 99% of the time. There are kits from people like iFlight and Menace RC also do a digipack as well, which includes patch antennas. So I would potentially, if you're struggling uh, getting a picture in a particular area, invest in one of those sets, swap it over and have a go. It can make a lot of difference. The only thing to remember, of course, is that the system is left-hand circular polarised, so any antennas that you do need need to be LHCP. And while we're on the subject of Menace RC and this stuff, the Aeropod that I'm a big fan of uh, is available in LHCP. You can get them with the right connectors and actually have two of those or one, depending on which air unit you've got on your wing, and that keeps everything nicely aerodynamic and because it's all left-hand circular polarised, just keeps the whole system working. It's a neat trick if you're a wing pilot and you're flying your wings or aircraft with the HD system. Fourth mod we're going to talk about is you can add uh, analog bits and pieces. I actually have a 3D printed mount on here. On this goes my little support for an analog setup. To be honest, I don't tend to use the analog setup a lot with this. I have my Fat Shark goggles uh, and I tend to use those for that. But I know a couple of people who quite like the module because with some of the modules that go in here, it gives you an on-off button and a different place for you to connect the power cable. More on that in a second. So I need to say a big shout out again to my Patreon, Martin, for reminding me about this one. Uh, again, the, the files for this is on Thingiverse. Uh, I'll put links down below. 
Fifth tip is if you are flying in 16.9 mode, the widescreen mode, then turn off the focus mode. Uh, by default, it's set to auto. And what that does is it preserves the center of the screen uh, in as high a detail as it possibly can and kind of sacrifices resolution at the edges. So you get this smudging. Now, modern cameras that are coming out at the moment uh, as kind of an answer to some of the chip shortages that we're having in the hobby, things like the Runcam MIPI, things like the Cadix Polar uh, are only 16.9. So if you have to use one of those cameras and it's 16.9, turn off that mode. It's just in the menus inside the goggles and it will clear up that smudging at the edge in the jiffy. I found the face fit is average on these goggles. There was an awful lot of light leak around the edges. Uh, I have actually added two additional pieces of foam at each side, which make it a much better fit. There are face plates available from third parties. Uh, there are 3D printable shims, but I've just used a piece of uh, foam and used some double-sided um, sticky tape uh, stuff that had Velcro on it to just make it fit. Uh, really surprised that DJI didn't come out with a couple of different uh, fits or a way to adjust that because I don't know anybody's face this actually fits straight out the box. Number seven, uh, a couple of things here. Uh, the lenses I find uh, get really, really greasy. Uh, I have long eyelashes, so they tend to brush against those and uh, it leaves a lot of grease on the lenses. So make sure you have a nice, soft, clean uh, lens cloth that you can keep them clean when you're out and about. The other big tip is that I would invest in a little case to keep them in. Uh, any d direct sunlight that shines onto the lenses is gonna focus them down and destroy part of the uh, little screens that are at the back of this thing and you'll end up with a little burnt dot or even a whole line if you're really unlucky. I would always, when you put them down on the ground, put them down with the lenses facing down and that way if uh, you accidentally do get some sunshine in them or they fall over, there's a chance that they're not going to point directly into the sun and you're going to damage them. To be fair, that's kind of the case for pretty most FPV goggles. You have to be very careful. Loads of different choices here for the cases. This is the one that I use. Uh, I bought them from eBay, from Amazon, lots of other places. This one of mine is brilliant because it also allows me to carry the FPV controller and the batteries and everything else in it. This is one case I can take to the field that has everything apart from the model and the batteries for the model that I need to fly. Links below to a couple of the other ideas for cases that you can use. I've also heard of people using things like the Jumper XYZ case. Number eight is about sight correction. Now, because of the large size of these, uh, depending on your glasses, you may be able to wear your spectacles with this on your face. The issue is, is that it depends on the shape of your face because as I've already mentioned, you know, my eyelashes are kind of brushing against the lens is on this. Uh, so, you know, that's tricky. Now, there are diopter sets and other things kicking around as well, but I need to say a thank you to uh, Patreon Martin again for this tip. He was talking about the stuff from VR Wave. Now, these are prescription lenses. He uses them, particularly if you have things like astigmatism, which can be a real issue for some pilots using these kind of goggles. They're not cheap, but they do make all the difference, and it means that you can just pop them take your glasses off, pop these on, and you can see everything perfectly. Tip nine is one that I myself only found out a couple of months ago, uh, by accident actually, flying around and caught this little rotating control on the side of the DJI FPV controller, and it changed the scene settings on the camera. This is incredibly useful. If you have the DJI FPV controller, it just means that if you're flying around and you find that uh, you know, the scene is a bit dark or whatever, or it's exposing horribly, you can just reach up and flick that around until you get a mode that looks really nice. So, big tip if you have one of those, uh, that control is actually very, very useful. Something that I completely missed, and like I say, found by accident. Next one is about power cables popping out. Now, one of my Patreons, Yanis, need to say thank you to him. He sent me this image here. It appears that there have actually been two different lengths of the power cable shipped with the kit. One is slightly shorter than the other. If you have the shorter one, there's a chance that your power cable can pop out. Now, there's loads of 3D printable parts that you can kind of attach here to kind of hold the thing in place. And I need to say a big thank you to Patreon Ulf for that link. 
But interesting, Patreon Yanis, who actually reported the problem with his cable coming out, DJI shipped him a replacement cable which had the longer barrel connector. So if you're really struggling with that, uh, that's potentially an option, or other people are using things like the on-off switch with uh, something like an analog uh, piece here to actually plug the stuff the power cable into the analog unit and use the on-off switch instead and kind of just cable tie everything up. Lots of different options to sort that out. I haven't had that issue here, but then I've got the slightly longer barrel connector. Don't forget that you can turn on your custom OSD and have on-screen display information fed back from your flight controller, supported in Betaflight, iNav, and even RD Pilot these days. Sends back MSP telemetry. Now, I did a video about how it all works and the fact that the telemetry comes down, comes into the goggles, and is actually displayed on the screen so you can have your height, speed, distance, direction to home. I'll uh, put a link down below to the list of things that you can actually get. There's an awful lot these days. Uh, sadly, not as many as I would like. And it's still only an MSP implementation, so DJI have left it up to the rest of the hobby to figure out how to make it all work. There is only one tip. Well, two tips, I guess. First of all is make sure you're running a recent version of the firmware. Anything released after July 2020 has the custom OSD ability turned on. And in the menus in here, you can find the custom OSD option. Make sure that is turned on. Configure it at the other end as per that video I've just mentioned. Links down below and it'll all work. It is worth its weight in gold, particularly with things like iNav, having the distance direction to home and all that stuff, as well as you know, the uh, battery voltages and current and milliamp hours consumed just let you fly more safely. The only thing that's changed recently about that is the ability to show the craft name. Uh, the craft name is a free text field. I now very cleverly figured out that they could actually rotate the text in that to show other things as well, messages, alerts, as well as the craft name. Uh, other people have done it, so I think it's also available in Emu Flight, and I think it's coming in Beta Flight as well. Uh, big thank you to Patreon Ruby for reminding me to mention that. Last tip for this video is by using a free app that you can download onto your Android phone or tablet, you can connect to the USB port on the goggles via an on the go cable and display the video from the goggles. Now, Couple of caveats, uh, the recording in the goggles doesn't work, so you can't record it, but it does mean that if you're in an area where you want to kind of give your phone to a buddy so he can kind of see the same view that you are stood by you as you're flying in HD FPV, then that's absolutely something you can do now. Issue with it is you need a reasonably decently powered Android device and you need to make sure that all the on-the-go stuff is turned on on it. Uh, but it's a really cute way to be able to show other people what's going on. Really disappointed in DJI that they didn't kind of publish that and make their own application. Again, it was up to somebody else to figure that out and create that app, which is a really handy thing to do. So hopefully those are interesting tips and tricks. Again, a couple of them, including the one about changing the scene on the DJI FPV controller, literally found out in the last couple of months. So if you're getting these goggles, uh, do keep all of that stuff in mind. My top tips are replace the strap, keep your firmware updated, and get yourself a case to keep it nice and safe. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.